Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today I would like to show you the two different ways to make the hoop earring on both top and the bottom part with the Rhino 6. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to start it from the top view and we are going to draw the circle for the hoop earring size in this one I like to make it huge so let's make it 40 roughly about a little bit about 40 millimeter then I'm going to cut it out the middle one in the middle one I'm going to draw an oval and the oval shape will look something like this you can adjust to the size for what you want I always like to starting from the midpoint so it's easier for me just using the gumball and to drag it up so that way maybe a little bit like this okay so that that look pretty cute Okay, so then uh, maybe a little bit lower here. Okay, so then uh, this is will be the overall shape for my hoop earring. In fact, I would like to make them a little bit longer. So maybe something like this. And next things I wanted to do is creating a shape. So I'm going to come in over here and using the art tool started with this quadrant, snapping to this quadrant holding my shift at the right view so I get something really bump there and of course this is too big so we're gonna drag it down those three points to get something like this okay so now we have this we are going to creating the surface let's go ahead to use the sweep to command and we're gonna go rail one rail two cross section and then you will get this shape if you wanted to shape um, to be the same high you can maintain the high and it will go something like this right so if you want the same high but I do not want to have the same high I want to have something like this and I'm going to click OK all right now because uh, the two shape is different so you can see the contour line doesn't go toward to the center so what I like to do it's coming into the top view and I'm going to draw a line starting from the zero and holding my shift to snapping into the construction plane so I get something like this depends on how many bump you want we are going to use the uh, polar array and we're gonna snapping into the zero again so how many do you want I'm not so sure let's try 12 and see what that look and I'm going to go for 360 degree and that is how many bump you're going to have you can have as many bump as you want to for this demonstration I'm going to stay with 12 so that's click OK and then so this is the curve we want we have uh, let me turn those curve into other layer so it's easier for you to see the line okay so what we wanted to do is we want to pick up all the curve that we have for we just do the uh, polar array and then we want those curve on the surface so on the top view this is really important you have to project it to the correct view on the top view we are going to project it to this surface and all you see is now the line is hopping on the surface oh and I noticed that uh, there's a little one mistake that this the lines right here I actually want to center inside of this open area so I'm going to Control Z to redo. Gonna pick up all those curves again. Not this one and not this one. I actually want to move them up a little bit. So it's not breaking. The, the central point is at the empty space. And then I'm going to have that to project it to this surface. Okay, so now we see is the line on the surface. So I'm going to turn this line into the red color. It's easier for you to see. Okay, so you can see that the line is there. So for those lines, let me turn off the surface. You can see the line is there. And we are going to make a bump there. Now to making a bump, we need to have a cross section. It's not this line need to be bumpier so what I like to do is to draw a curve and the curve it can go simply go from here to here and just coming out a little bit so this is the new curve that we are going to deal with then if you like that you might want to just repeating to do something similar 
uh, you can eyeball it to get it as a shadow on the top or do whatever, how bump it, whatever you want. So I'm gonna go do something like this for the rest of them. So this need to be bumpier. This coming up need to be a little bit more bumpier. And this on the bottom is a super bump like this. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to create a surface. Now, since it is a symmetrical, so it doesn't have to be doing that all the way to the other side. We can finish the surface and it's just copy there. All right. That's coming into the perspective. And this is what you see there. So what we are going to do is do the sweep two and you got rail one, rail two, and this is the cross section. After the sweep two, you're going to see this big bump coming into inside of the oval. If you do not want to see that, you might want to be creating a straight line or uh, something flatter so it doesn't bump inside. And we're going to use the same command to finish the rest of it. But one thing about the sweep two is when you pick up, try to pick up a curve, you got the option for the curve and all the surface edge. If you want to make sure that it's 100% touched to the other face, uh, the other surface, which we do, we want to pick up the surface edge. And here you don't have other option. You just have the curve. So that's fine. All right, so um, notice that we are going to have a huge bump right there. It's because we only separate into 12 sections. If you will have more section, then we can eliminate the huge bump looking. But let's go ahead to finish that again. We want to pick up the surface edge here, here, here. And we're going to continue to finish that with the surface edge here. Pick up the curve here. As you can see, we got a really bumpy right there. And let me show you what I have done earlier on this one. As you can see, that still have a bump, but because this is a lot more section than the 12, so the bump is not so obviously. But again, so if you wanted to um, having a less bump, you may want to have a more section. Once you finish that, just go ahead to join everybody. And we want to coming over here and using the mirror command to finish that by mirror to the other side. Make sure you hold the shift so that way it will snap in correctly. I also wanted to uh, mirror that one to the bottom part and let's go ahead to join them as well. And that's how we finish the bottom part. Now that's coming over here. Now that's coming over here on the right view. I'm going to create a top part. I'm going to snapping into somewhere at the zero on the construction plane. And I'm going to move in this one inside of it. Depends on how big you would like to have for this one. It can be bigger or smaller. And I'm just setting up about this size, uh, roughly close to 18 millimeter. And then um, we need to make a bump all the way around for our second rail. And let's go ahead to use this commands for the star. Snapping into the center and the star, I want to have a little bit more. Uh, maybe let's try 20 and see how that goes. And depends on how thick you want it. And you're going to bring in something like that. Okay, so with all the point, we can have a fitted on all of them. The quicker command to use, it's going to be fitted corners. And we can fit it for, um, and I'm going to check the fitted radius, maybe 1.2. And then we will get this really nice uh, wavy all the way uh, symmetrical there. All right, it is for the hoop earring. So I'm going to uh, draw a straight line from the center to here and another line go from here to here. Uh, basically, uh, we need to cut it out using those two curves to cut it out this curve here. Okay, so we no longer need this one. And we also going to delete this one. Okay, so now we have our rail there. We need to creating the cross section. So I'm gonna come in over here and use the conic corners rectangle. And I'm going to use the three points. So I'm gonna snap into point one, two, and coming over here for another one, roughly about this size. 
And I like to move them back to the center. It's easier to control later on. So let me move it uh, from the midpoint to the end point, and then we will get this one. All right, so I'm going to highlight those into the red colors easier for you to see. Okay, so now we are going to use the sweep to rail. This is rail one, rail two, cross section. And we'll get something like this bumpy. Now, if you do not want it to bump it to cave in, you can click on the maintain high, then you will get this type of a bump. It's up to you like how you like to uh, your hoop earring to look like. Once we have that, we want to use the cap command to close it. And if you like, you can actually give it a small radius so that will look nicer. Let's try 0.35 on this one and this one. And we'll get something a little bit rounder. Okay. At the end, we will need to, and um, at the end, we will need to have a straight line. I'm going to snap in here. This is for our post. And most of the time in the industry, we want to make it about 11 millimeter. And that is the standard size. And let's go ahead to pipe in this one to be a uh, 20 gauge or close to the 0.81 millimeter. So we can coming over to the diameter and just type it 0.81 make sure it's round cap and i'm going to move it this back here most of the time um, we don't cast this post we will solder it on later because it's small uh, it's cleaner and you can polish the area over here this is a harder to polish area and so if we can uh, solder it on later or it's just laser welding back it will be easier okay but for the rendering, we will need that look over there. I hope you enjoy the video. If you like to see a lot more videos uh, for Rhino trick and tips, please join the membership. Thank you for watching. See you next.